the Synergy Project. Let's go around and identify ourselves to the record. Bill, let's start here. Bill Evans, Subway? Peterson, Subway. Ethan Burford's mayor. Yes. Yeah. Pat Schreier, our regional manager. Thank you, Pat. Amy Dombosky. Tim Steele. L.B. Gray Jackson. Dick Training. We got everybody. Thank you, Jennifer. Alden, I got this report last night and it was riveting reading. It was exactly as bad as we thought it was and the costs associated to make it well. So please lead the discussion. If I could, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to take a few brief comments. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. I let Alden uh, take over because he is far more versed in these matters and has a clear idea. We're here today because we put a pause on the SAP project, on the ERP project. Um, and we did that because it was initially projected to cost about $9 million to take. 9.6. 9.6. Thank you for. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, it's quite okay, but we went tens of millions over and years behind the schedule. And I thought it was the prudent thing to do to slow down, assess where we were, especially when your own consultant, the assembly's own consultant, said that you could be at an $80 million cost if you weren't careful. Um, and, and clearly, we needed to get a handle on the direction that this project was going. And so I wanted external eyes to come in and take a look at it. Fortunately, uh, Anchorage has a number of people who are incredibly well positioned to understand ERPs um, and to advise us. We put together an external advisory committee, which you're going to see today and hear from Alden, is a summary of their report. Um, and I think the conclusions are, uh, are illuminating and also suggest a path forward. So we're going to do what we can to make sure that we, we have regained our footing as far as this project goes. And then at this point, I think all of who's overseeing the SAP, the point to oversee the ERP project, uh, will be the discussion. Well, my thanks, Mr. Mayor, to the seven people that were part of this committee that worked on it. Because it's not an easy task. I went over your report, and you guys had every point right online. I recently, uh, recently appreciated page uh, 14. It has some interesting points on it. That's fine, sir. And copies will be available to the public. I think they're printing them now. So I'll, I'll turn the time over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to introduce Pat Shires. He's the current uh, CIO for UAA. He was one of the committee members who uh, was very active in the entire process. Um, and as I will uh, actually get to the first slide here, but the group met, uh, there were seven members, they were extremely dedicated, and I, I hope the assembly and the public can appreciate that. And they that. cost the city nothing. That is correct. They, they were volunteer, uh, they, a volunteer during the day. Uh, there were five three-hour meetings over the six-week period where collectively they were all there talking, discussing, evaluating, but they also spent a tremendous amount of personal time uh, away from it on weekends, nights. We kept getting updates all through the night uh, from different members as they were working on this document. And I would hope that uh, the assembly as well as the public would appreciate that the quality of the document is actually, I think, pretty substantial. Um, and it just shows the dedication and the amount of work that they went through. And uh, I certainly appreciate that. And I know the rest of the community members as well. So thank you. Um, if at the end, the, the assembly has any questions for Pat on process and procedure, we're more than happy to answer those. We're going to have some questions for you too, Alden. Uh, okay. We'll be able to do that. So to begin with, the, uh, the advisory committee kind of had two, two key things that they were going to be looking at. This was their mission. We're going to review the chronology and status of the Smidgey project. So basically, where did we start and where are we at right now and how do we get there? Um, and then also try to make a recommendation or for the path forward to the administration of here's what we believe that uh, uh, we should go with this particular process. And I believe this is uh, some of the page 14 uh, comments that you were referring to. Uh, yep. Kenny. Um, but basically, they looked at it and they had some key findings from the, the product audits and the consultant reports, and they felt very, very strongly that uh, these points here were really some things that need not happen and be uh, further propagated into the future and not be repeated. And, and basically, these are some of the things that uh, led to where we're at currently, which was some concerns with leadership, direction, accountability, and governance by the MOA and contractors. There was some lacking in there. Uh, an undefined scope, 
uh, deficient project management, an unrealistic budget. As you mentioned, the original one was 9.6 million. If you look for San Diego, it's 60 million, Portland's 50 million. I mean, they were huge numbers to begin with. San Diego was 50 um, million. Project was under resourced and lacking MOA leadership and accountability. There was no plan for several different areas that go along with the ERP system, such as data management and as well as post production support. And um, internally, the project was seen as a threat to some stakeholders with limited buy in, and change is always difficult. Um, but that has to be communicated and managed. And uh, those are some of the shortcomings that uh, uh, the committee reviewed based upon all of the different findings. Some of these came from the bid uh, through the consultant, as well as many of the different audits that were performed uh, through the process. I wanted to mention that I do have copies for the assembly of the uh, quality gate check audit was also performed, um, which kind of uh, was done by SAP to show where we were in 2012 and where we were uh, in July of this year. It shows uh, positive movement and all those kind of things. I'd be more than happy to hand out a copy of that to everybody here at the end of the done as well. So the committee came up with some high-level recommendations, and we'll get into some more specifics here a little bit, but they believe very strongly that the SAP project is salvageable um, if the following measures are taken into consideration and more importantly implemented as quickly as possible. Um, they recommend using the modified project management and governance model that's currently in place, uh, it's no, uh, known as AS ASAP, which is the accelerated SAP process. Uh, they believe that needs to be dedicated MOA staff providing leadership. Um, they believe that we need to leverage the SAP Public Services Division, which basically what they're referring to there is, is they recommend involving or contracting with SAP itself uh, to make this project a success. So basically bringing them on board to be the systems integrator uh, after blueprinting is completed, but bringing SAP. That was the success with Portland and with uh, San Diego was that uh, they have a very similar trajectory as the Muni has, and they brought in actual SAP developers of the system, and they were able to bring the uh, project to uh, live status. Uh, they are also recommending a more of a fixed price contract to be implemented, which would kind of uh, give the entire number out there to begin with and say deliver this project for this particular time frame at this cost, uh, rather than an ongoing uh, time and material kind of uh, methodology. Um, they're also letting everyone know that the ongoing support and maintenance costs are going to be significant uh, with any ERP system, and uh, those numbers are not to be shocked when they're coming. But um, it, all that I just want to interject here, too, the existing system we have, too, has ongoing. We're, again, we're on the mainframe, and PeopleSoft as well has, has ma yearly maintenance costs yeah. as well. So there was, would be some offset on those. But they talk about that in this. Mm -hmm. um, the M, um, this is the, the, the big one here. The MOA must have a substantially increased budget to reach go live status. I think they were using the comparables that were out there as well as similar situations. Um, and then they also uh, felt that uh, some vendor audits should be conducted um, on the prior vendors to uh, uh, take a look and make sure the cost that and expenditures were matched up with actual work that was being produced at that point in time. So they were uh, recommending an audit to be performed on those vendors. And this one here is a little bit of detail, and I think you'll see kind of a pattern and, and certainly shown in the report, but they really felt very strong and that some strong, uh, good momentum had been built since the beginning portion of this year, and they really wanted to continue that momentum. Um, however, in order to be able to continue that, uh, they also they felt that the ultimate responsibility for the success and fa uh, failure of this project has to lie in the mayor. And you're going to see the mayor here several times. Uh, mayor must take corrective measures required to ensure the product's project stays on focus and meets objectives. The mayor must show the staff by example that this project is the top priority until going live. And this goes back to that leadership component that was so stressed, top-down approach. Um, you know, this is the, the key project for the municipality and the mayor needs to take charge on that. Um, there needs to be some newly dedicated project leadership in place. I would I include myself in that particular role. Uh, the ASAP methodology that's currently being followed is appropriate and should be, and that is the accelerated uh, SAP model of delivering this project to the end. They agree with that. Uh, the committee believes that there's been some really good progress uh, made so far since the new program manager was brought on board, and as I think you've seen some reports that have been surfacing, we're about between 40 and 55 percent completed on the, the blueprint phase, that's the design phase. Uh, uh, 
before you can actually go and configure the system. Um, based on the success that SAP had in Portland and San Diego, they have great confidence that SAP uh, Public Services can deliver this because they're the owner of the system and that they have an invested interest and incentive to make sure that they deliver their own system uh, and turn it online. And that's why they feel very strong that SAP should be involved. And then the last bullet there, because of that methodology, there's going to be significant uh, a necessary cost premium to this approach because of uh, uh, their uh, salaries and, and all the, the cost structure that they have um, in order to maintain this in a long-term relationship. And there's a few other suggestions here that they have coming up. I wanted to give just a, a quick little synopsis. This is slightly different than what was in the report, but I wanted to just kind of highlight it a little bit different. Currently, I believe the uh, budget for this project is 49.2 million. That's what's been approved through the assembly. Um, as of 925, which was during the pause, uh, 36.2 million of that has been spent. Um, there had a remaining number of just under 13 million. Now there are some money that's been encumbered. And we're currently reviewing the encumbrances to make sure that we still have uh, vendors out there that we want to use. And if not, we'll disencumber that, put it back, and, and focus it on the more core areas or the core vendors that we're going to be using. And then I put this part in here because I, I know I was going to get the question. Um, we're currently going to be receiving SAP um, proposals for, once the blueprinting is finished, for realization to go live, that next unknown piece that uh, is out there. Um, so. I don't know what those numbers are, I don't have them yet, but that's, the, that's the, the whole part of SAP coming on board and finishing the project. And they're going to be giving us a couple of different options and proposals here in the near future. And once we have that information, then the administration can look through there and, and see what options might be best suited uh, for us going forward. But I, I wanted to at least let the assembly know that uh, that's uh, some work that's in process currently and uh, those numbers will be coming here in the near future to be able to try to put a big picture number uh, on what the cost of bringing the system wide might be. Um, the committee uh, looked at a variety of other alternatives. That was one of their, their mm -hmm. missions, was mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. looked at the value of the program. Yeah. So what are some other alternatives out there? They looked at retaining PeopleSoft, uh, whether it be in its current environment or in, a, in an upgrade or re-implementation. They looked at um, basically trying to restart SAP completely from ground zero. Um, and then they also looked at uh, a couple other systems that are out there to make a determination of whether we should stop completely with SAP and start over with a brand new system from scratch. The reasons for rejecting those alternatives uh, are kind of listed here, but uh, they do believe that SAP software will work. It's worked everywhere. It was the, the concern that they've had is the implementation to get the software to work. It's basically not the software's problem. Uh, that we're not up and running at this point in time. There's all these other areas that they address. So they believe they have a strong belief in the system itself. Uh, the investment to date will be lost. You know, that $36 million uh, has to be moved from capital to operating expense and will have actual budget impact. Um, and we have to pay the loan back. That was a, a huge topic of discussion um, that came up. And um, I, I would say probably the key decision that they, uh, or the point that they looked at. Um, and then in addition to that, um, you know, there's been people working on this project for three and four years and, and switching to a completely brand new system or starting over from scratch. Uh, there were some morale concerns that they had and uh, with, especially since we're actually on with a positive momentum now and people uh, going into the pause were felt really strong with the direction they were going and starting over from scratch. There was some concerns about being, you know, how the staff would perceive that across the municipality. So this, these next two slides get into some of the detailed recommendations. They had some of the higher level ones, but I wanted to <coughs> highlight, and this is by not all means all of the ones that were in the report, but some of the ones that uh, they really focused on. Um, they uh, recommend removing the pause from the, this project immediately, which basically means to begin blueprinting uh, as fast as possible. Whether we end up going with SAP as the implementer or a different one, the blueprint needs to be completed, and then if we put, if we have to go with a different one, when we put that out for RFP, we'll be able to get much better pricing and, and costing because they'll know exactly what we want the system. So we need to begin that blueprinting process to, to complete that uh, as soon as possible, and the recommendations immediately. 
Uh, the mayor, the assembly, and the municipality leadership must own this project, take accountability for the results, and ensure the project is set up to succeed. Uh, this is a common theme throughout the, all the entire document with regards to this. As I mentioned, they believe very strongly that SAP should be brought on board and, and be basically share the risk of making this project uh, uh, be successful all the way to the end, and that's why they, they want them on board, because they are, their belief is, is that uh, they won't fail because they can't fail implementing their own system. Excuse me. Um, they be, uh, believe very strongly that SAP should uh, provide all the IT uh, support, infrastructure, project management, post-production support, training, technology, everything. So basically, mm. post it outside of the municipality, get them to do all the upgrades, and, and very similar to what happened with PeopleSoft where we came out of, uh, uh, you know, we stopped in 03 because we couldn't upgrade anymore, uh, put it in SAP's lab, have them run it, and then that way that the ongoing maintenance of that system we won't get into a situation where we're several versions behind or we can't upgrade, um, and the recommendation is to have SAP host and do all of that work. Uh, internally, business processes need to be standardized as much as possible, uh, not only internally, but also with the system. Try to not customize the system as much. That's why we couldn't upgrade because it was too customized uh, to what the union practices is. So they recommend that the departments really take a strong stance in trying to make sure they're modifying their processes to the system to the greatest degree possible without having to have a whole lot of custom work done. Um, and in addition to that, try to minimize the third-party applications that interface. You know, we have all of these other ancillary systems, and the more interfaces you have, the more you have to keep those maintained, the more you have to worry about uh, continuing degradation downstream and all of those kind of things. So whatever you can, and uh, there's a discussion about Chromos here, and that, that was kind of tied back to these interfaces as well. Um, some key project deliverable uh, delivery enablers as well that they want to have for uh, us to take a serious look at is try to install some SharePoint uh, to uh, be able to be one data storage place for all the work that's been done in this project, all the policies, procedures, papers, all of our meeting minutes because you know years from now with new people and, and, and new positions and so forth, have a data repository where people can come back and say, what happened at this meeting on this particular time? Why was this decision made? So if they have to modify the system in the future or look something up, they've got a place to go to that. Um, and then they also believe that there's gonna be, a, you know, there's a substantial number of consultants to complete blueprinting. Um, the more we can kind of get them to be remote and give them the tools, the less we have to worry about Departments and per diem and airline tickets and all of that. So the recommendation is to try to, to get, use Link and Skype as much as possible to, to have them work from home uh, or off-site and not necessarily be traveling all the way to, um, to Anchorage to be able to do this. Continuing on some of their recommendations, um, this kind of goes back to SAP running all the, the infrastructure. Um, basically develop a comprehensive SAP IT and data management plan. We need to get upgraded from version five to version seven as fast as possible because the blueprinting is gonna be taking that into consideration. Um, we have to make a decision on the HANA database. Um, the recommendation is to switch from Kronos to using SAP for time management that eliminates all the interfaces, all the different versions, some of the computer issues that you've heard earlier about different versions. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, when you have to make a change because of a bargaining contract, you make it in one system rather than having to make it throughout everything. So for just uh, an ease of use, uh, that's really important. And here's the cost one again. Hardware and software investment to support this landscape is going to be, going to be costly. And I uh, want to make everybody aware that that's the, that, that's the reality of the project. Um, one of the areas I think was brought up last week or week before by uh, Zig, the consultant, was the, the fact that there really wasn't a content management uh, process or repository that was identified during the last three or four years. We believe this is a key gap that needs to be uh, dealt with now as a part of this ongoing project. Um, they're recommending open text, which is uh, basically embedded within SAP. 
And what this does is if you have all your documents, your invoices, your birth certificates, all those things, if you keep them in your system, the core SAP system, the system just keeps growing, 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 and it becomes very difficult and very expensive to maintain. Have a, a system that allows those yeah. documents to be put in another area where you can add this them project very easily, very cheaply, and that's what and I pull that did. information out and keep it out of your core ERP system. Um, this is this is a key area that we're looking at, and it's a gap that had not been really addressed in the past. And uh, they they are very adamant that this be an, uh, another area that uh, we have to take into consideration, and it will have a cost impact as pretty much everything uh, has here. We're also making a strong recommendation that as part of our plan going forward, we have to come up with a plan for post-production support. Once the system goes live, what happens, how does it keep maintaining, and all those kind of things. In many of these systems, you, know, you, you spend all this time and energy doing it, but you, you never, you're not going to get 100% of everything. There will always be ongoing things that have to be changed and updated. What's that plan? How, who's going to do that? Is that internal staff, external staff, all of those kind of questions. Um, they believe that we really need to be actively involved in, in change management, uh, and this goes back to the morale of the employees and trying to, to let them understand that this is a priority uh, for the municipality that we change this system uh, to be from PeopleSoft to, in this case, SAP. Um, we need to be communicating to the employees, letting them know why we're doing this, keep them actively involved. But um, in addition to that, the, you know, the leadership needs to step up and fully surrender to SAP's project management methodology and resource requirements because that's what has gotten these other uh, municipalities to success. Um, and with, as we mentioned earlier, some of the reasons why uh, some of the concerns and failures that may have happened during the past. And they, they believe that you need to follow SAP's guidelines in order to be successful in the SAP system. And then lastly, um, they believe, uh, once again, that uh, some vendor audits in the prior three or four years should be completed. So to kind of summarize here, you know, what were some of the benefits of this, uh, this pause? You know, we've been on it for six weeks now. Um, this gave the, uh, the committee a, an opportunity to really, I think, pre prepare this document, an external you know, third party, so to speak, independent, a review of where we're at and, and recommendations. I think that's valuable. Um, I think that that really provides a perspective. Uh, a lot of people have been involved in this project for a long time. Um, so the seven were able to come in kind of unbiased, look at it with fresh eyes and be able to, to give their viewpoints. I think there's some value in that. Um, it allowed uh, us some time to uh, work towards the uh, some outstanding issues. You know, the ECM we were talking about, the content management, Time management, there's been a project going on that, data strategy and reporting, all of these things that have been going, that need, decisions need to be made on, we were able to move forward aggressively in all those areas during this pause and, and, and get to a point where we can make decisions on those in a relatively short order because the rest of the blueprint is dependent upon those decisions. So we're trying to make sure we're as fiscally responsible as possible. So in order to do that, we don't need consultants waiting to, for the community to be making decisions. We need to have our decisions made and we say this is what we want and then they can act upon that appropriately. Um, it did allow us to, to evaluate and look at planning and development of all the delivery options, all these other data warehouses, ECM, all these the other areas that yeah. we have to take into consideration. You should be in gave us some time to look into that. And then the last point I, I want to bring up that. here is that uh, both SAP and Oxford and Peloton, who were kind of the, the so, uh, the contracting groups who supplied the vast majority of the consultants when the project was up and running did have people who were working on this project trying to work some of these decisions forward where they worked. Uh, the consultants were free. So during this pause, uh, there was no uni uh, monies going to them. Um, and it's valued, it's over $100,000 of, of, of money during the month of September for uh, the services that they uh, were able to provide in assisting us, like I said, we get to be a TAM time management had a, a whole process, as well as some reporting uh, requirements that, uh, that we've, we've been talking about. So they've been very active in assisting myself and the rest of the leadership team in moving these decisions, and that time that they were spending was not billed to uh, miss it out. Um, and that's basically well, we have some questions. I'm going to go around the room, because every okay. member has a question. Ms. Gray Jackson first. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Um, first, I'd like to start out with thanking the committee for its work. 
Um, you've done a great job and, and very timely, and I appreciate that, and I want to thank all of them for taking the lead. So I have a couple of questions. And the first one is, um, your report talks about getting something like Microsoft SharePoint to store project-related documents. You, is that the same as project management well, there's, to some extent? There's two different things. You have the actual blueprints. Those are maintained within the, the solution manager within SAP. That's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is like all of these, all the position papers, all of the documents, the charter documents, every email that went back and forth for decision-making processes, that's what their recommendation is to put that in a SharePoint system, or that's the repository for all those different documents that got us to a goal line. System. Right, and that's what I thought, but I also thought, isn't that why we hired RDI? So, I've been told that, that that is a true statement. However, RDI is lacking in a couple of those different areas, and that's why the committee was recommending we move to SharePoint because it doesn't have the full functionality and capability of editing and sharing documents and all those kind of things, and uh, that limited the success of, of that particular uh, environment. Right, know. right. So we don't need RDI to do that anymore. But anyway, um, let me follow up with the rest of my questions. So, um, and, there, and a decision is going to be made whether or not to, to um, go with HANA. But we've been told in the past, well, months and months ago, that um, if we kept SA, if we stayed with SAP, that we had to go with HANA. Go with HANA's so, new version. Yes. The, okay. The, that is probably going to be the recommendation uh, if we stay with SAP. The, 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 there's a really, there's an urgent need when we still stay with SAP to get the version or version 5 to version 7 as fast as possible. We don't have the capability of doing that in-house, not only with the resources, but also under the time frame. And we need SAP to be able to, with their expertise, to get that database, uh, the configured database. We actually have a configured system out there because we've had a few go-lives that have failed. It's not correctly you know, doing what it needs to do, but we have that. And we need to get that in the most current version and then they can take the blueprint documents that are there and go through them process by process and find out whether it was right, wrong, or needs to be changed. But we've got to get that. But that has to happen very quickly because there's a three to four month time period to get that accomplished. And we want to be done with blueprinting so we can start configuring. We need to get the database up to its most current version. Thank you. And so going with SAP to do the implementation, in my opinion, is a very good idea. Um, so does that mean that um, we'll still need Peloton for anything? Uh, Peloton will be supplying consultants, just like SAP and Oxford have been, as well as a couple other ones, to, uh, to do that. I think when we were up and running, we were 24 to 30 consultants on board uh, to do a blueprint. We actually had uh, some areas we weren't filling because we were looking at where we were going, for example, a FERC consultant to look at the, uh, the utilities. So I actually think our consultant staffing during the blueprinting stage is going to be slightly more than what uh, we were when we started the pause to begin with because we've been holding a few key slots open until we figured out the direction. And just one last question, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Good, ma'am. And so the committee spent a lot of time in you know, brought us a report pretty darn quick, and I'm impressed with that, I really am. But my question is, did the committee have any opportunity to interview any of the stakeholders, also known as employees? Just curious. I don't, I, we, we certainly, I don't, we did not, they did not request that. We, we did have uh, interactions with other vendors, as we mentioned, and they, they certainly came in and gave some information. Um, we did have, you know, my, my team, uh, Glenda, Kim, and, and Lindsay, you know, certainly they're providing information, but we did not have any um, other municipal employees come in there and provide viewpoints. Right. Well, I, I would suspect, since you had those municipal employees who were virtually part of the team, that they probably brought some feedback from other employees. Did you, did so... Did you feel they had all the, the information necessary at the fingertips? Sure. Assembly member, because of the time frame, and the audits that had been previously conducted and the availability of staff that had been involved, we felt it would be more expeditious to use the material we had in front of us <coughs> rather than a parade of folks who could come in. And I, I think that was the right choice. Right, and I'm not saying that it was the wrong choice. You know, and it makes sense. You had municipal employees, and I'm sure that there were others 
who gave them some feedback to help with your decision. But anyway, that's it, and thank you again. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Steele. Well, I guess questions. my questions are, uh, and I haven't I haven't looked through it uh, completely. What are we talking about in terms of time frame? Time frame for for completion go live. Go live. Um, boy, it, it's certainly not going to be before January of 2017. Okay. That would be the earliest. Uh, it's going to be later. It, it's going to be either that the earliest. It potentially could be middle of 2017. Yeah. And that's contingent upon us beginning blueprinting immediately. Yeah. Well. I I certainly think we ought to we ought to get going on the blueprinting because it has to be done and it ages doesn't age well necessarily. <laughs> Anything uh, else, sir? This just says another uh, thirteen million will be done, right? Yeah. That says thirteen million is left over. Yeah. Oh, oh, we'll already okay. approved. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, misread that. Uh, I, I nice thought. That <laughs> was hopeful. Wishful thinking. Ms. Dabowski and then Miss Johnston. Ms. Um, Dabowski. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so going back to initially when we first um, started the pause, there was some discussion about uh, certain contracts, leases, whatnot, that we were going to try to get out of. I'm thinking of the Sunshine Mall. What success have we had? We were not unable to get out of that. I believe it was an 18 month. Can, can you repeat that? We were, we were unable to get out of that particular lease. Um, I believe it was an 18 month lease. However, we also had consultants who were who were working here on the time management report as well as the consultants who were working on, on their own time. So we actually needed about 10 to 12 spaces or offices anyway. So we just kept the same rooms and offices that they had while they were when they were getting paid. So but we did not we still don't have the Sunshine Lease project. Um so that one, if SAP takes over, um, I'm assuming they're not going to need that extra space, or will they? They're going to, the, the consultants will still need to be here. Uh, Those 18 spaces? Well, we have two, we, the recommendation is going to be that we continue to do the blueprinting stage, where we're kind of the implementer running it, and we're going to need, we're going to probably have 35 to 45 people working on this project blueprinting over the next five to five months. Okay. Once that is done, I don't know, I can't answer your question because we haven't got the offers or the options back from SAP, whether they're going to have on-site consultants, off-site, out-of-state. Um, we may not need that space uh, or as much of that space, but at, at this point in time, I don't know what the solution that we're recommending for the realization to go live is at this point. Okay. My expectation is real estate services will work on subleasing those spaces rather than um, Now, I know, I mean, I looked at this project for almost fifty million dollars, and obviously, I know it's premature, and I'm sure you don't want to. But I want to know ballpark. I mean, I'm not asking you to go live deadline. I mean, are we talking twenty million, fifty million? How much more are we talking? Because we're talking about an ERP project that initially was pitched at nine point six million. Nine point six. And if we come up at eighty, ninety, hundred million, I just want to know <coughs> if it's what taxpayers are on the hook for. I'm very apprehensive because we haven't even started bargaining or haven't started negotiations with SAP. I've even thrown out a, a ballpark estimate because uh, if they come in at a number quarter of that and we say we're going to spend you know, four times that amount, we've just given away our hand. Um, we, we literally are going to have to sit down with them and negotiate what that, that, uh, that amount is going to be. So I, I really think it would be... It wouldn't be beneficial from our bargaining strategy or the negotiating strategy the mayor and, and the CFO uh, by throwing a number out there because that could really undermine our own uh, bargaining strategy. Yeah, that makes sense. And I, and I assume when you come to the assembly, I mean, I don't care if somebody whispers me a number in the, in the hallway, or but when you come to the assembly and ask us to go forward, I mean, obviously that will be the topic. Are you asking us for 30 million or are you asking us for, you know, 15? You know, that's going to be the, the discussion. Um, and, you know, I mean, this project ultimately, w we've seen it in a lot of the things that you put up in, Mr. Trey said, the page 14, which I haven't read the report yet. I, I don't have a copy of it yet. But, um, but we've seen those same things in, in multiple audit reports. And so I don't think it's a surprise to any of us. And I will Send say, it see, I had was to emailed to us. Yeah, I was going to say, it's just there I haven't heard today. But um, I have to say, you know, this time I have to say it, Mr. Jackson was right. Complete disaster. But 
There is a silver lining <laughs> and there is a path forward. The question is how much is it going to cost? Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Johnson, <laughs> ma'am. Well, first of all, I am very, very excited that this administration is looking at a Good, Mr. Mayor. You know, we're halfway across the bridge. It's not that I love the bridge, but I love the thought of getting to the other side. But I mean, it, it, and, and the engagement in the mayor, the leadership. I'm talking about bridges, see what happened to the mayor yesterday. No. no. People walk across the bridge, bridge and broke away. Like the the water. I wouldn't have this on my hands. I'm not a big believer in the ostrich theory. Bury your head in the sand, the problems go away. We've got to confront what we've got, we've got to address it, <coughs> and there's a there's a cost that comes with it, but there's at the same time there's a cost for not acting. And we need to be mindful of both choices. And and with that cost for not acting, um, we've got some, some pretty clear um, thoughts here. And I, one of the things that we have, you know, continued up to Zig is decisions haven't been made, like the blueprint. There's a number of items on the blueprint. We need to tweet it and let them know. Are you going to be really starting really at eight? Because uh, we said we're going to have a rest of the year 2017. Well, two o'clock is starting on Monday. With the mayor and myself, we start reviewing. Uh, the nine key areas that needed to have some decisions made. Great, and that will that will include your uh, um, the data management, yeah. data strategy, reporting, uh, budget, uh, uh, CCM, those are all part of the nine okay. uh, key areas that need the decisions need to be made so that the blueprint can. Uh, there's plenty of still blueprinting that can be done, but we we want those decisions made as soon as possible so that the complete blueprint can be designed and we know what the path is. And once we have that path, then we can go to the timeline. And I know everyone wants to know when it's going to be done. We have to make those decisions first, and then the then the consultants can say, all right, in order to make to do that, this is how long it's going to take with the resources and the cost to be able to do that. But they won't be able to do that until we make those decisions. So the enterprise content management, um, our, our consultants brought that up a number of times. That's a pretty labor intensive. Is that, I mean, basically scanning all documents? Well, the documents like invoices, if you're paying an invoice, you want that piece of paper to, to, to go through. You have to have scanners. Uh, so that's where some of the hardware and the costs that go in, and you have to get it into an electronic format to be able to then put it in a repository to be able to search on it and gather it with something in the future. So if it comes, now, maybe if an invoice can be emailed in, then you don't have to scan that particular document. But if it comes in through the mail, then yes, you have to scan it. Right. So you're going to do as much from the data-driven, I mean, the digital-driven data as possible. And, and I'm a little concerned about that because it is so labor-intensive. I, I hope it doesn't hold up the other decisions and the other. This is really, you're bringing the back end in. And I, I would hate to see that be a driver for us. It, it's a very, it's a very, it, it, there's a lot of big projects. It's almost like a small project, just like that, where we're out of the strategy and all those. However, it's important to make that decision now because when we're blueprinting, they need to know that that's what the software and the system is going to be available. I think that's a bad thing. So, yes, the data is going to be there. There's a lot of work done after the project is done. There's a lot of work done after the project is done. Yes, if there's a lot of work done after the project has been blueprinted during realization and testing, that's specifically driven to that. But you want to design your blueprints with that in mind. And so we have to know what that decision is now, what software we're going to use, how it's going to reside, because they're going to design a workflow within SAP to be able to where the, how that document's going to move through different departments. And that workflow needs to be designed to the blueprinting phase so that they program that. So you're basically just making a decision, but we're, we're not going to, I mean, it's a process of the ongoing, but it's not going to happen. 
That is correct. Okay, because I was a little nervous. It's starting off long for Black and Beach. Not that I don't mm -hmm. feel that our enterprise needs to be But are you going to be addressing those needs and concerns before we go live with everything else? Or I mean, I'm, I'm just wondering if that's something we can delay to do. Well, right now, the, 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 pro the system is being designed both on the HR side and on the finance side to take the entire municipality into consideration. They have different financial reporting requirements for two, you know, maintain two sets of books and so forth. That's where the first portion, portion comes in. So we need it now because we have a blueprint for all of those things to be able to do that. Um, just like the utilities who uh, pay their employees salaries that they're paid through payroll, that's where the time management for the entire municipality has to be taken into consideration. As, as we go through the process. I hope I can think of it. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh, um, Kronos, and, and I'm not, I don't care for Kronos. Well, there's a little bit of data. Currently, what has the data on Kronos? I've seen some numbers about a million to a million and a half is what I've seen. I have uh, four expenditures. So we'll have to write that down. Well, the system's currently up, and I'm sure it's being depreciated through its normal schedule at that point now. But if we do, if we do switch all the SAP, a portion of that might happen. Okay, and, and, and if I remember, when we looked at the SAP versus Cronus, there were, there were, I mean, there were some trade-offs. SAP was up front a little bit more expensive, but we had to trade We already had the module. To maintain all the interfaces and all of the yeah, we already bought it. Uh, we have the modules. modules. databases that you have to change things and so forth. That, that's really where it goes. Okay. I would look, and I'll bring, I would look at if we, uh, any hardware that we purchased for Kronos with the clocks and so forth. We might be able to leverage those clocks and use them for SAP and just as a, as a time gathering tool. So we might not lose the value of the money that was invested in, in the clocks. And that's not, the clocks are expensive. So that, I'm looking at that as a, as trying to keep those costs and not have to re new. It, it'd be nice. The, the um, um, in this report, there was some discussion and Zig always has about the executive committee and the functional committee. And with our past, the functional committee, not that it wasn't a, a good committee, but they had their own bylaws. And, I mean, it was, it was pretty convoluted ordeal. Are you going to readdress what the executive committee is and what the functional committee is and take some of the recommendations from here? We certainly that's, were looking at that yesterday. The functional committee did it was a more collaborative discussion, decision-making body rather than me just sitting up there and talking. It's been tough during the pause to have this because, you know, what are, you, what are we talking about? We can't talk about the committee. We, it, it, yeah. Uh, now that we, we're with the pause in, you know, ending the pause, then we can actually, I think, engage more in a decision-making body because they're going to be blueprinting things that, that we're not going to have decisions and those, those decisions will need to be raised to the functional steering committee to be able to get resolution to. And as I mentioned, uh, yes, and as I mentioned, we need to have weekly executive uh, meetings to not only keep everybody <coughs> engaged, but also we have these larger decisions from the entire municipality that have to be made and then implement it you know, downstream. And then I think my final one, one of the hard things is I can't read my writing. Um, but and I, we all are aware that if we do do a um, um, contract with SAP, SAP is historically has other contracts, but they are the, the, the lead contractor. So I mean, with San Diego, it was, a, it was actually our past the project manager who they said that they would hire back in a heartbeat um, to fix their system, but he was an SAP contract. The telecom is an SAP contract. So I just, just, we're all aware of that. And I have to, and when I get the, the proposals back here, and, and hopefully shortly, they're going to have onshore, offshore, in Alaska, outside. I mean, there's going to be a variety of options that they're going to throw out there for us different costs, different timelines, different kind of, you know, we're going to be looking at a variety of different factors, risk, cost, timeline, and, and all of those kind of things. So it's hard for me to say what it's going to be, but it could certainly be that SAP is the leader and they're using Peloton resources, some, to, to help with that. And that, that's certainly an option. And having two sons that work in IT and having used offshore, I'm not fearful of that. 
but I also, uh, I'm very pleased, the other thing that makes me exceptionally pleased is not demanding on-site. I think we've spent a lot of money for the on-site. Skype was fine, and, and distance was usually was fine, and uh, had good budget. Their, their recommendation is that Thank the you, entire system be held and not on-site as it's yeah. possible. Right. Thank you. Mr. Evans, sir. Yeah, I just want to reiterate the thanks to the committee having followed. That they need to send voices through email. Yeah, they were tremendous. And I very much appreciate that. I don't have a lot of specific questions. I don't claim to understand much of this, to be honest with you. Um, uh, the two things I took away from this, that I do like and I think is important, is I, I do agree with the, the notion of going with SAP to get this finished. I think there's a lot of, a lot of reasons to do that. I think it's the best course forward. I also uh, think the fixed price contract makes a lot of sense, and I'm embarrassed, to be honest, because I, I assumed, I guess, all along that SAP wouldn't do a fixed price contract. Otherwise, I would have thought we would have entered into that long ago and placed the risk somewhere I, else. I, I'm Nobody not saying that we're them. coming forward with their proposals. That's just the recommendation that the administration uh, I would probably suspect that most likely it's not going to be a fixed price proposal that would come back at that discussion. But at least they're being asked. And I'll just say this that well, SAP uh, has an opportunity here to salvage its reputation and to prevent further damage to its reputation. And so I would hope that they take advantage of that. Um, and I guess we have a reputation to salvage as well. Um, and that's it. My other point is I don't know, um, like I said, the technical details of this um, But, you know, from the year and a half that I've been on the assembly and, and listening to various uh, presentations, and they've changed over the year and a half, and they've all come up to the same place. Like, wow, this sucks. It really should be something different. Um, I just really wish somebody would write a book about this because, you know, ultimately it is a fascinating story, and it's really. <laughs> The failure is not—it's not a software failure. It's not a technology failure. It's a failure. San Diego uh, did write a new story on it. Um, hmm? I'm pretty sure. San Diego I, I did can't, write so I'm not pinpointing exactly right. who's to blame for that. Um, probably a right. number mm -hmm. of people for us at some level. Mm -hmm. But the fix to that is fault. better organizational leadership. I think mean, no matter what all the details are, um, what I've said from you know the very first time I've been briefed on this problem. Uh, is that it lacks a leader. It lacks somebody who will stand in front of me and take the blame or, and tell me what's going to happen. We've had different people that would come and brief us, but they're never really the ones, you know, there's a, there's a committee and there's another committee and it's nebulous and there's all kinds of people. Somebody has to own, and I, and I saw the thing that, you know, the mayor is going to own, and I think that's the right answer. You know, I, I, I wouldn't want to be in shoes stepping into this thing, but the reality is, you know, that's what they pay the big bucks for. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, his you know, administration is going to be judged, and rightfully so, on how it fixes this problem. It wasn't his problem he didn't create it, but it's his now. And it, we're gonna, I'm going to be looking to him to be that leader, uh, to be just straightforward with us, to tell us exactly what it's going to cost, when it's going to be done. And if that changes at any point, tell me why. And you know, I think that's all that you know, any legislator can expect. Uh, and if we could get that, I think we'd be in uh, a lot better shape. We, thank you, Mr. Chair. Go we ahead, can't sir. wish problems away. Much as we'd like to be able to have that kind of agility, we, problems manifest themselves, and we can't ignore them. We have to address them. This is one of those situations. And at this point, taxpayers have spent a considerable amount of money, and the municipality has devoted a considerable amount of effort. Now, the responsibility that I have is to make sure that taxpayer dollars uh, are salvaged as best we can, um, that we complete a project that is in the municipality's best interest. It's not whether I want it to be here or not, it's just something that has to be done, and I'm committed to making sure that it happens under the best possible circumstances. And, uh, Mr. I will be here all the way through this process, standing in front of you, giving you exactly what you need. I will make my other comment now. Uh, the, there are actually, every one of these ones that has happened in the country, there is a free port. In fact, the committee put three attachments to the report last night on San Diego and Portland, where write-ups were done about organizational failure and how they got to where they were at. And that's where the committee uh, got a lot of their information from about, you know, this, this, this is, we're not new. 
It's happened in all these other areas, and there's actually reports to do that. So if you're interested, uh, there are three attachments, and they, they have those exact write-ups on how those cities fail. Um, but uh, just to your point, it's, it's not uncommon. Mr. Flynn, I, Ilby and I talked to the CFO for San Diego, and she pointed out the fact that they had actually written up what had went wrong. It started with their original implementer, as it did here. They ended up switching to SAP, as I wish to heavens we had done in the beginning. Mr. Flynn? Mr. Peterson. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, I, would, I, I just got some practical questions about uh, uh, the financing. We, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to write off the 36.2 no. million. No, no. Because we, we keep no. Okay. By keeping the SAP project moving forward, it can still stay as capital as it's currently done and then depreciate it over the, the life cycle. That's, but if you went with a different system, other than that, then it would have to be. Okay. And, um, and so to get the remaining uh, funding to finish the project, are we going to move on for that? Is that the plan? Oh, gosh. I think at this juncture, what mm -hmm. we need to do is negotiate with SAP, the fixed price contract, determine what that could be. We're going to keep the assembly prize of those developments. So this is a situation where we have to work together. I think there's pretty common consensus that um, we have to finish an ERP project, um, and that's why we're going to pursue those negotiations. And, uh, to the extent that traditional financing may be required, uh, obviously we're going to consult with you as a person. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a few final comments. Alden, you were talking about having a meeting starting next week with the mayor on where to go. Would you please include every grade Jackson? She's head of my committee on SAP. Her. Just don't have meetings She's at 8 o'clock in the committee. morning. Don't do it before 8 o'clock in the morning or 9 o'clock or you'll <laughs> die. But I want to make sure she's up to date as she relays to the rest of the assembly what we need to do because we've got to get Hannah on track. When you look at what SAP is saying, the newest update is going to manda mandate Hannah. We have Hana, Heck, and AMS that have to happen yeah. very quickly to be able to get this, to have to go through the assembly, through the process, with the money, so that the system can be taken over and converted. It's going to take four months to be able to get that done, and that's right about the time I want Blueprint to be over, so we can move into configuration. And, and we need to have your documents in front of us so we can take action on that part we need to do. And to purchasing, uh, can we demand, require, ask, whatever, hmm? verb you want to use, that everything be submitted to the city digitally, like an invoice, comes in digitally as part of us doing business with people outside the city of Anchorage. So it can come into the city, into the system digitally done, makes it easier for us to store it rather than we have to copy it. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's, okay. That's one of the things I hope that's something you guys, will take, you guys administration will do. As somebody told me recently, the whole world's digital and why don't we have the same capability going to the dump? So we need to make sure we've got this for yeah. this. I think that was Amy talking about it. That's old. And the other I thing is, Mr. Mail. Mayor, you were talking about bridges. I saw this nice clip, video clip this morning on thing New Zealand. Walk on the suspension bridge, the five people ended up in the water. It broke without warning. So we need to work on this together. There was more plenty of Because when I take a look at this, it says the mayor, but it's not just the mayor. It's all of us are like to the fish are responsible for making sure this thing is done. I can't tell you how many times all of us here asked the old CFO, when's this going live? Soon. And then the old IT head, when's it going live? Next month it'll be live. Of course, he's not with us anymore, neither is she. But we still, like the officials, we still have to put this thing to bed. So I look forward to working with you on this. It's not just yours, sir. We're done.